In the electric field unit, we learned how to find the electric field produced by a charge distribution. There are two laws we can use. Coulomb's law can be used to find the electric field produced by a point charge a distance r away. The electric field equals to k times q over r squared, where the k is also 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. If there is more than one point charge, we can use Coulomb's law to find the field produced by each point charge and then use superposition principle to add all the electric field vectors together. If there is a continuous charge distribution, we can chop the charges into little pieces of dq. So we can use Coulomb's law to find the electric field dE produced by the point charge dq and then integrate the vector dE to get the electric field we want. There is also Gauss's law we can use to find the electric field produced by some highly symmetric charge distributions. Gauss's law says the electric flux of a closed Gaussian surface, the closed integral of E dot dA, equals to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon naught. We can use Gauss's law to find the electric field produced by spherically symmetric charge distribution, very long cylindrically symmetric charge distribution, or very large sheet or sheets of charge. When we use Gauss's law, we have to choose appropriate imaginary closed Gaussian surface for our integral. We are not interested in using Gauss's law if it involves complicated integration because Coulomb's law will be easier for that. We use Gauss's law only when there is enough symmetry. So for the part of a Gaussian surface with non-zero flux, we can always take out the constant E, the constant cosine the angle between E and the dA, so we are left with only dA in the integral, which simply gives us the total area. In this magnetism unit, we will learn to find the magnetic field produced by electric current. There are also two laws for us to use. There is Biot-Savart law. Just like Coulomb's law, it is for finding the field produced by a point source. Let's say this is our point current source. It is an extremely short segment of current. Suppose the current in this wire is I. What do you think is a good way to express this point current source? Is it the I? No, not the I. If this current is 5 amps, the extremely short segment also carries 5 amps of current, not an extremely small amount of current. What is extremely small is the length the L not the current. So the appropriate way to express this current source is I times dL. The magnetic field produced by this point current source, just like Coulomb's law, is K times the point source divided by R squared, except that for magnetic field, it's a little more complicated. We have to write I times dL the vector cross the unit vector r. Remember, this hat here tells us this is a unit vector, a vector with length 1. So dl cross this unit vector equals to dl times 1 times sine the angle between the two vectors. This cross product does not involve the distance r, it only tells us that the angle matters. Because the source is an extremely small segment of current, its magnetic field is actually dB instead of B. And this constant K is not the same as that K. Sometimes we write a sub E and a sub M to tell them apart. This K for magnetism equals to mu naught over 4 pi, and mu naught is called the permeability of free space. Now let's look at the direction of vector dB. dB gets its direction from this cross product dL gets its direction from the current I. The unit vector R has the same direction as R. And R goes from the source to the location we're interested in. 
so R goes that way. So if we use the right hand rule for this cross product, we would have DL cross R and our sum goes into the paper. So the DB here goes into the paper. But we actually do not have to use the cross product right hand rule to find the direction of DB. We can also use our thumb to follow the current, and the curved four fingers will point into the paper on that side. So dB goes into the paper. The other law we can use is Ampere's law. Ampere's law says this thing called the circulation is the closed integral of B dot dL along a closed Amperian loop or Amperian path. And this equals to mu naught times the enclosed current. We use Ampere's law to find the magnetic field produced by some highly symmetric currents. It works very similarly to Gauss's law. We will get into more detail in future lessons.